Hi, Nat. Hi, Rick. Hi, kids. Hi, kids. You're, you're all a really I long way away. I can't see you. They're too far away. Can you guys yeah. come closer? Can you come closer? Move closer. Move closer. Move closer. Move closer. Move shuffle bottom, shuffle down. Right. Uh, they're not, they're, doing, they're not doing it. No. Maybe we should go. Maybe we should shuffle down. Okay. We'll go closer. Which way are you going to go, Nat? I'm going to go this way. <laughs> Better. Now I can see you. G'day, kids. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. It is. Nat, yeah. what did we do last week at Kids Club? Well, last week we looked at another name of Jesus and what it means that Jesus is called, or called himself actually, the Son of Man. Yeah. I didn't have a prop for Son of Man, but anyway. But today we are going to be looking at another Son of name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to try and guess uh, Son of Joseph. No. Son of Mary? N- no. Son of potatoes? No, that one's not even close. Yeah, okay. Uh, son of son of David? No, it's they're all those three have all been true so far, but not the one that we're looking at today. Son of Abraham. Again, that's what Jesus is called at the beginning of Matthew, but not the one that we're doing today. Son of, I think I've got it. Son of God. Yes, you got it. Yes, son of God. So we've done son of man. Now we're doing Son of God. You might remember that last week we said that sometimes people think Son of Man is talking about Jesus' human part and Son of God is talking about his godly part or his God part. But we learned last week that actually Son of Man kind of refers to both. So we're going to learn about Son of God and what does that mean? So throughout the New Testament, Jesus is referred to the Son of God or as my son, yeah, yeah. over a hundred times. I can remember that... Other people in the Bible are called sons of God. So uh, in the Old Testament, some angels are called sons of God. Uh, The people, the nation is called the sons of God. Uh, And the king, the special king like King David, was the son of God. Um, uh, So the Bible talks about Israel and the kings of Israel being God's sons. And it, it seems to show a really special relationship between God and his people or between God and his king. Uh, so is that how it works for Jesus also? Well, yes, it certainly is. And although it's a little bit different as well. So God wants us to know who Jesus is and what he has done for us. So as we've discovered so far, this term, he gives him sorts of different special names that have you know, special meanings to help us understand. So Jesus is the son who was with the father in the beginning. That is his always existed and so that's kind of one way we can think about and that's how it's a bit different to those sons talking about david and israel because they hadn't always existed like jesus had always existed so david was god's son in that he was a king but he wasn't the son of god that's right. but jesus always was the son of the yes. father even though there was never a time when he was not that's right which is kind of a little bit confusing but in the beginning so that's in the beginning but we first hear that jesus is called the son of god or will be called the son of god is when the angel you might remember this when the angel visits mary and joseph yes. uh, and in the dreams they're told that they will have a son so jesus would be the son of the most high he would be conceived by the holy spirit so god calls jesus his beloved son in another part, just not long after that, at his baptism and says that he's pleased with him. And that another part in the Bible, he says, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So Jesus called God Father Mm -hmm. a lot in the, uh, in in fact, and I didn't know this until I was reading about it in a a commentary today, that when he taught the disciples, he always used Father Mm -hmm. to talk about God. There you go, yeah, God as Father. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, you might remember just before he died, and then again, when he's actually on the cross, Jesus cries out to God as Father. And it's even more than just a title. It's like Dad. So it sounds like Jesus really does have a very close relationship with with God, his Father. Um, In fact, isn't that why he got in trouble with the Pharisees? Because he was calling God his Father? Yes, and by calling someone your Father in those days, we don't really get it here, but it's like saying that you're equal with them. Yeah, we don't quite get that kind of understand because we we see each other as being equal all the time but that wasn't how things worked in their time so yes yeah, very much it's like a he was saying it's equal so it's it's definitely true that there was this special relationship and pharisees picked up on that but when jesus calls god father it does show that he has a special and close relationship with father and we also know something else that it means it means that jesus is a son who is completely obedient to the father all the time you hear that he was completely obedient to his father 
all the time. We're called to be like Jesus, right? Jesus was obedient all the time. So God sent his beloved son so that we can know what he is really like, what God is really like. Yeah, because John says no one has ever seen God, but the only begotten son, that is Jesus, who is at the father's side, has made him known. Yeah, to us, so we can see what God is like. And Jesus taught us and showed us that God loves us in spite of our sins. And in fact, Jesus' obedience, his perfect obedience, led him to die on the cross. Yeah, for us. So Jesus says that he only does and says whatever the Father does and says. He is the only one who is able to show us exactly what God is like. And how we can be with God forever. There's, he says, in fact, himself, no one comes to the Father except through me. No other way to get to God the Father or even to know God the Father except by knowing Jesus the Son. Uh, Jesus shows that he's a powerful Son of God. I guess that that's why he can do things like calming the storm, uh, driving evil spirits out of people and healing all kinds of sickness. Um, and he even raised people from the dead. That's yeah, yes. like giving them life is something that the Father does. And Jesus has that because he's the Son. Uh, and then, of course, he ultimately shows that he's the Son because he, his Father ro- ro- rose. Rose? Yeah. Rose? In our family, if you get grammar wrong like that, that's a financial penalty. Ooh. Raised him from the dead. <laughs> raised him from the dead because death cannot hold the Son of God. That's right. Yeah. So it, it's really excellent news. And did you know that Jesus called God my father quite a bit in the Bible but he also calls God your father he says to the disciples and he's praying for us and he talks about God as your father when he talks to us so we can call God father too that's right because Jesus is the obedient son of God we can call God father John says in his letter and I've got it just here this is what John wrote in his letter because he wrote some letters after when he was pretty old and he says think about how much the father loves us he loves us so much that he lets us be called his children as we truly are and Paul talks about that we can pray to Abba, Abba father. father yeah which is that not that really close term that we might call our own dads yeah. there's a very limited number of people who can call me father yeah. because I have a limited number of sons that's a lot of them but that's a really special relationship and so jesus as god's son has a really special relationship with the father as the son of god it's a title for being the king it shows how special his relationship with god is and because he's a son those who trust in him can be called adopted sons become children of god sons and daughters sons and daughters That sounds like it's really good news for us. Uh, His name, once again, helps us to understand who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Thank you. Nat, could you pray for us, please? Yeah. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is your Son, the only begotten Son who is with you for all time. And we thank you that because he was the obedient Son, had a special relationship with you, that obedience led him to the cross that we can also call you Father. And we are so thankful for that. And we pray that you would help us to remember that and to um, not take it for granted that we can call the creator of the universe Father. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, What's happening happening now? Well, I was thinking maybe if you walk that way and I'll walk that way. Bye, Nat. Bye, Bye, kids. Bye. Bye. Who are you? Who are you? One of the ways that we describe who we are is who we are special to. 
I'm really special to my mum. I know that because she tells me. In this office, there are three desks and there are some more desks upstairs, but this desk is special to me. It's my desk that I sit at. It's been set apart for me. The Bible has a word which sounds kind of strange, but it means set apart the special. It's the word holy. That's H-O-L-Y, not H-O-E-L-Y, things with holes. Here are some other things that are holy. There are lots of hats here, but this hat is holy to me. It's special to me, and I look good. Here are a whole lot of shoes. Some of them belong to me, but these shoes are holy to me for my running. They're special to me. Nobody else gets to wear these shoes. And here are some bikes. None of these are holy to me because I don't have a bike, but they are holy to my boys. And here are lots and lots of cars and buses. I don't know any of them. Other people do. None of them are holy to me, but this one is holy to me, special to me. Look. Doot, doot. Do you like pizza? Ha! <laughs> you can't have this one. This is my pizza. It's holy to me, special to me. Mm, man, I'm glad to be eating this pizza. It was a really cold day when I made this video. Yum. In the Old Testament of the Bible, God's people, the Israelites, were chosen by God out of all the other nations to be holy to him. They were set apart for him. They were special for him. It was a wonderful thing for the Israelites to be holy to God. And in the Israelite camp where God lived, well, showed that he dwelled with them in his tabernacle, things that were unclean had to be sent outside the camp. Things that are unclean can't come near a holy God. Things that were clean were allowed in the camp, but some things could be specially made holy and set apart for God. Things like the tools they used in the tabernacle. Unclean, set apart from God. Clean and holy, set apart as special for God. And so the Bible calls God's Old Testament people, the Israelites, a holy priesthood, a kingdom set apart for God. Who are you? Are you special to anyone? Are you set apart for anyone? Sometimes we don't feel very special. Sometimes we feel like we're nobody important at all. Like, why would anybody choose us? But... Good news! Good news! The Bible says that all people who trust in Jesus are holy to God. That's H-O-L-Y, not the things with holes in it. The Bible teaches that when we were sinners, we were unclean, separated from God, couldn't come to God. But now that you are washed through Jesus, you become holy to God, set apart and special for God. Now, God himself is a holy God. He's unlike anything else. He's totally unique and distinct. There's no one else. There's nothing else like God. He is holy. And he makes us holy to him in Jesus. There's a song about this. Are you ready? God is a holy God. We can't be friends because of our sin. Jesus died to wash us clean. When we put our trust in him, God opens his arms to welcome us in. God opens his arms to welcome us in. God is a holy God. Now you sing! How do we live as holy people? Well, we're urged in the New Testament to be holy because God is holy. If you trust in Jesus, you are holy. You've been set apart especially for God. You belong to God in a wonderfully precious way. And so, live that way. Live in a way that's different from the world out there. Live in a way that is holy, just like your God is holy. Who are you? If you trust in Jesus, you are 
Oh.